Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So it's been a few days since our last upload um, and simply because we've just been driving on with the house. So basically all of our outside plastering except for our plinths around the house has been completely finished. Um, we've actually had our heat pump installed now, which I'll show you in a second. And as you can see from behind me here, we've started on our painting in a big way. So um, we've also gotten some of our lights turned on um, and some of our smart home gears already started for our lighting um, and our sockets being installed. So I'm just gonna give you a quick run through of what we've done, explain all the little bits and bobs in relation to the heat pump, the lighting, and all those different things that we've done. And then I'll see you uh, again at the end of the video. So I'm just going to start at the uh, front door. Um, so we've just been doing cutting in, um, just doing our stain block. You can kind of see the difference in colored air, different in texture actually on the, uh, around the doorway areas. Just doing stain block on our uh, beads and just around our windows. So basically if there's any condensation, um, you don't want it to stain anywhere around the uh, the window there. So so we've been doing that um, and then we went ahead and got our spray machine out and started doing all the hallways. And basically everywhere from, from this side kind of uh, to the right, we're trying to prioritize um, because our kitchen is gonna be going in in a couple of weeks as well as our utility room. Um, and I wanna start trying to get a bit of flooring down um, just so we can kind of make this a little bit habitable and usable. And then we can finish off the bedrooms at the front, uh, the main master bedroom and ensuite and walk-in wardrobe and then the main bathroom. Um, so I'll just give you a quick walk around. So as you can see, we've been uh, doing our spraying here. So basically we've done an undercoat uh, on these walls here and we've done a single top coat um, we actually found a deal from uh, a place online that was doing crown paint. Uh, so we bought some of that. We're probably going to need a little bit more. Now it is late in the evening here, so uh, it is a little bit dark. But you can see it's still quite bright. And anybody that's been following us on Instagram, you'll be able to, uh, to see kind of what we've done. So if you haven't uh, already checked us out. On Instagram, go and have a look there. So it's the underscore kill there underscore Reno. If you fill into Instagram, you can see all of our pictures all the way back to when we started uh, the build itself. So we've been painting all of this. Everything's kind of covered down. Uh, all of our spotlights obviously are all cut there. We've cut out our singlet for our piece of art that's going to go on that wall. We've got our PIR sensor in the main hallway as well as in the other hallway running down to bedrooms. That's all cut and our fire alarm cable coming out there. Um, and then into the uh, formal sitting room, again, same with this, we've given it an undercoat. Actually, this has only had an undercoat on the walls. Um, and then we've done stain blocking on anywhere that had the mushroom fixings just to stop any type of corrosion, but also any type of cold bridging really helps with that. Uh, and then around the windows as well. Um, we have our flooring inside, which you probably saw from a few other videos as well as our um, our other electrical gear. So our RCPOs, our PIR sensors, all those bits and bobs from Hager and the likes, as well as our lighting. We've already kind of started into using all of that. So I'm probably gonna do a bit of a tidy up on that later on. We've been using this as our point for, for uh, storing paint as well, cause it's just a good uh, starting place in the house to grab all of our bits and bobs. Um, but you know, it's going really, really well. Um, the only issue we really had was doing the ceilings. It was a little bit patchy and a uh, few lines from when we did the spraying. Not too sure why that is. I, I think it takes a bit to dial in the, the spray machine, um, which I probably hadn't gotten right at that stage, but look, we'll, we'll get there in the end. But uh, we've uh, just rollered all these ceilings a little bit earlier on. We rollered all the hallway, the playroom, the utility, and the hallway running down to the bedrooms which you can see there. So that's all being rollered on the ceiling just to make sure we don't have any lines because we want as crisp a finish as we can possibly get. All of our down lights are all cut out there as well as our PIR and our singlet for another piece of art right at the end. And um, then you can see, obviously, if I move into this bedroom here, we've just done our stain blocking there. So that kind of gives you an idea of the prep we've done on the other room. So all the three bedrooms are done as far as stain blocking goes. The bathroom at the end is done. Our ensuite is done. The walk-in wardrobe is all stain blocked. I've also done a bit of stain blocking in the uh, main bathroom. It's a little bit dark. And then just our uh, master bedroom uh, needs to be done. So I just need to set up the scaffolding. So I'm trying to prioritize getting rid of the scaffolding 
in the main extension so I can move it into here with the wheels. Uh, not that we're short of scaffolding, we've got plenty of it. Um, it's just basically I don't want to have two sets of scaffolding up in the house. Um, so you can see all of that's all done there. And uh, our electrician Luke has been uh, fitting off sockets. And then again, what we've done is he had a few days off. So when he came back in earlier uh, this week, we've gotten him to prioritize the uh, far end of the house here so we can get all of that uh, done and dusted. I'm just gonna do a quick run upstairs. Um, as you can see, all of that's all undercoated, ready to go. We've given this wall here and this wall here a second coat, but we will be rollering all of this with our far Faro and Ball match paint, uh, strong white. Um, so you can see this is all done. We also have this all skimmed out in here, our little storage room. Um, and all of our hallway is all done here. So it's very, very, very fast with the spray machine. I've been very impressed by it. As far as speed goes, finish is quite good. It does take a while to get it right. There is some lines, but again, I think for the crispness that we're looking at, I think we're probably going to end up going for a final coat with a roller um, and just get that perfect even finish. I feel more confident with it. Um, so basically we'll do what we did downstairs in all of these areas. And then anywhere that's having a color on the walls, uh, most of the walls actually are going to have uh, an off white color. So we're going to have to roll them anyway and cut in. So we'll do a roller, cut in and then roller again and we'll get that perfect finish. I'll explain why the windows are open up here. All the v looks are open as well. Um, basically, when we turned the heat pump on, what we thought was a dry floor definitely wasn't a dry floor. Um, it had been poured about a week and a half before the heat pump went in. And as soon as the heat pump started, all the moisture started coming out of the floor. And it was a lot. So when we arrived in, it was set to 21 degrees. Wasn't really my preference to have it set to 21. Um, but basically, it had been set to 21. And when I came in, there was water running down the walls. It was so heavy with condensation. So basically, we've gotten all of that sorted. Uh, we left the Velux open as much as we could. Luckily, we had some dry days. The Velux do automatically close themselves when there is rain. But... Um, we had a few dry days, so they stayed open. So we opened them up uh, in the main extension and in the master suite, as well as upstairs, and all of our tilt and turn windows we opened up as well. As far as the heat pump goes, the install was, there was a few hiccups. Um, when I arrived in, it was, if you compare it to the face and soft there, it looks fairly straight. It's quite a quite straight and true. That was kind of leaning at an angle like that, if you can imagine the way my camera has gone there. Um, and then I was told by the plumber it was level, but it wasn't. Um, so we got that sorted anyway. It's not a big issue, uh, but it was good to catch it uh, early on. The other issue we had was the plumber left his cables too short. So we got him to pull out the cables when the electrician was here doing first fix. He left them all too short. So again, no point in getting stressed about it. We had some SWA left over. Um, which is uh, steel wire armor cable. So we were able to basically make a temporary connection in underneath um, and get everything powered in. So what we have is we've got our mains cable here, um, which is uh, our, our uh, SWA cable. And then we have our other mains coming in here as well uh, for our pump and our compressor, as well as our data cable. And that data cable runs straight back to the controller. And um, that's all connected in underneath. But what we're actually gonna do is put an IP rated box right underneath uh, the unit here, just where that little hole is already drilled, just to cover that over. I'm gonna put an IP rated box there, run our SWA into the box, put our glands on, and then glands on the other side out, and I'll show that when it's done, or I'll pop a picture up on Instagram. We're gonna put those glands on, and then we're gonna run some galvanized conduit. Not that we really need to with the SWA, but it's not a bad thing to do. Uh, we're gonna run that right along in underneath, if you can imagine, in underneath here, and up along beside the black, flow and return pipe and then straight in here so we'll probably bring the galvanized conduit up here across with our 90 and then another 90 in and that will keep that nice and tidy again most of this is going to be under the ground by the time the patio is finished um but yeah so so that's basically it it's a double stack unit 
Um, it's a 16.2 kilowatt, which is really what we need. And when you go into the house now, we had it set at 17 degrees and it was quite warm. 21 degrees is really the optimum, but uh, at 17, it's very, very warm in here. So it's just a testament to the insulation that we put in the floor, the insulation behind the plasterboard, and then obviously our spray foam insulation. If you haven't seen that, have a look back at our previous videos and you'll see some of the insulation of that as well as a review of, of different pieces like that. Um, it's not too loud. I'm inside now, obviously these are triple glazed windows. I can't hear a thing. Even when some of the windows are open, I can't hear a thing. Um, and the great thing about this unit is it's not just only a heat pump, but it actually has like an air conditioning in it. So in the summertime, if we find it's too warm in the house, it's unlikely because of the way it's insulated. What we can do is we can go to our heat pump controller, which is currently hanging out of the wall, um, and we can set it to do a reverse cycle. So what it'll actually do is pump cold, chilled water through the floor, and it'll cool the building down. So that's just an option, basically, uh, with that. Um, and it's a nice little unit. Uh, we have to do a little bit of fixing on the wall because it was originally supposed to be a double box, but this actually goes on surface. So that's it there. Um, so it's currently set to 21 degrees and it's very, very toasty. It is currently three degrees outside. So uh, 21 degrees inside the house, it is very, very warm. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's the heat pump. We've got a smaller 7.2 kilowatt unit, which is gonna go in for the garage on its own supply and yeah it's it just sits right outside it's very you know you can see if i have to come right over to the window here just to catch the edge of it there and um, so it, it's it's quite inconspicuous um and it, it should be absolutely fine for the house uh we don't have any radiators upstairs it's ambient heating upstairs um, and it is quite warm upstairs, even with the windows open. Um, but yeah, so the, the only thing I, I would say is something that caught me by surprise was the amount of condensation in the liquid screed, even though it's dry and we were walking on it. So just something to think about if you are doing your own build. Um, and then I suppose the main thing uh, with the house outside of all of the painting that we've been doing, you know, the utility room is done there. It's quite dark, obviously. In here we've no lights connected yet our wc is done the playroom is all done here as well um but the big thing is the main extension so we've actually given this uh a single coat on the walls and we've stain blocked then all the walls we've given the ceiling two coats and my job now this evening is to basically give the the top ceiling area where the lights are just one final coat just to finish off and i guess you could probably live without doing it but i want it to be as crisp as possible so i think what i'm probably going to do is i'm going to do the top section and all the areas uh coming down past the v-lux and then i need to do a little bit of cutting in at the v-lux so i can do a final coat inside there which again because it's on a 90 degree plane to the main ceiling i can do afterwards i don't need to do it all in one uh, you wouldn't see any type of color difference there um and then all of this is all undercoated so all of this is all completely undercoated all the way around so you do a cut in at the doors cut in at the windows and these doors here as well um and then what we're going to do is we have again our fire own ball matched paint from color trend which we need to cut in and roller the walls and as i said what i normally do is i'll roller the wall completely right in around the windows as much as i can as close as i can get to all the edges let that dry uh, give it a day and then i come back along cut in do a single cut in with my brush and my small roller just to feather out all the brush strokes uh, that you have let that dry for another day and then do a final roller of the wall and that gives me a perfect finish so i'll be doing that all the way around uh, and what it also allows me to do is before i start doing any cutting in i can do a large section of the wall with a 12 or an 18 inch roller and if for some reason god forbid we didn't like the look of the paint we could then say you know we need to change that color or go back to white so uh so yeah so it gives you it gives you a little bit of an out there but that's the that's the plan for this evening and this is how this room is shaping up as you can see we've got some of our furniture delivered uh they're from navin sofa factory uh in navin in county mead they're bespoke made so 
my wife picked out all of the designs, the color of the feet, as well as the, the color of the, the material and the texture. So we've got a couple of sofas for our main living area here, a couple of sofas over on the right hand side for our formal sitting room, some coffee tables, a little chaise for our bedroom, and then we have our dining, ta our dining chairs and our bar stools upstairs. And we've got our dining table and our mattress for our bedroom arriving tomorrow um, from Carl's Furniture on the Nace Road in Dublin. Again, I'll pop links up to all of these guys. Just if you have any queries, let me know or you can contact them directly. Um, but again, yeah, the big thing, I suppose, in this extension is our lights being turned on here. So um, as you know, our lighting uh, came directly from the manufacturer. We dealt with a company uh, in China that deals with Osram chips and uh, manufacturer, manufacturers absolutely everything else themselves. So these fittings at full uh, output are 30 watts, so a 30 watt chip on board, 4000 Kelvin, 97 CRI uh, LED chip. So it's quite technical, but good color rendering. So if, you know, an orange will look like an orange under these lights as it would under daylight. So you don't get any, you're not getting any wash out of light. It's a diffused uh, lens on it. So that basically means that it softens the light coming out and it'll give it a 90 degree beam. So it's kind of pushing light down the ceiling space as well as down onto the walls and the floor. Um, we went for 4000 Kelvin because it's very, very close to daylight color. Um, and we're kind of going for that crisp modern look. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, uh, I think it's going to look quite well with the strong white on the walls as well as the, the kind of crisp, brilliant white we have on our ceilings. And then these are fully controlled uh, through our switch here. So this is our little uh, switch here. So that's actually controlled. If I had the Google Home set up, I could do it by voice. But these have full dimming control, so I can literally bring them right down to uh, 1%, uh, which is very, very handy. So you can see them starting to dim down. You can dim them right down. So I get that kind of kind of glow um, in the area. So it's, it's very good. Now I think with the uh, light switch, kind of dims, dims them in like 10% intervals or 5% intervals. I know on the app or voice control, I can dim it in 1% intervals. So I can bring that right down to 1% if I wanted to. Um, so again, it just really depends. Now we have all these connected right now in uh, a single uh, control. So for, for all 10 downlights, we do have the option of splitting. So I can do the four at the bottom, the two in the middle, and these four up here at the kitchen all separately if I want to, um, and it just really depends. So for example, if we were having dinner and we wanted to turn off the ones in the living, ro living room area and the kitchen area, we can just have those uh, two guys on there. But again, it's an ambient style light, it's a 90 degree beam coming out of those. So you're, you're not gonna get that pinpoint of light and that's not really what we were going for. We're not going for that kind of gallery style lighting in these areas. We will be doing that in the hallways if we have artwork in there and that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, and then the other thing, I'm just gonna turn these lights back up. Um, the other thing we have then in this area, as well as our MBHR pipes, is our Google Home Protect. So we've got a Google Home Protect over the kitchen area and a Google Home Protect over the living room area. And uh, that's really just conforming to the new regulation standards. There's actually, I think I redid the insurance on the house the other day, we had 23. Uh, Google Home protects throughout the main house and the garage and that's just simply because you have to have them in all living spaces any oversight living spaces such as this room has to have two um, but our formal sitting room our utility room playroom all the bedrooms uh, the only area they don't have to be is in the bathroom and um, so and these do uh, carbon monoxide uh, VOCs and smoke so they'll give a little notification on the phone. They will talk to you as well and let you know what's going on. And then they'll obviously sound an alarm. They also have a built-in feature of emergency lighting. So if something does happen, uh, the emergency lighting will turn on in all of these to give lighting in each of the rooms if there is any, any issues. And again, these all connect onto the uh, Google Home app. So everything is gonna be controlled by Google Home. 
in, in the property. So they're really, really nice units. Um, we got a deal on these on Amazon. They were about uh, 75, 80 euro. Uh, so it was cheaper than actually buying them directly. But uh, yeah, um, they're really, really nice. They're a little bit more expensive than what you would normally have, but I guess they kind of go with the style of house that we're doing here and what we're trying to achieve with the smart home. And they are all controlled. Uh, through a central system in our plant room and all done through our red fire cable so yeah so hope you guys like how that all looks and we'll see how the rest of the rooms turn out so that's the uh, update for today um if you do have any questions please let me know we will put another video up um, in the next week or so just kind of updating on how the electrical install is going. Um, my plan here today, as I said, is to finish off some painting. I'm going to start prioritizing getting some flooring down as well. So I'll do a video putting down our herringbone floor. Uh, that's going to be a bit of an unknown for me. I've never done it before, but there's no there's no harm in trying something once. Uh, so we're going to go and get that uh, laid down. The floor is actually pretty dry now, just to recap on the whole condensation thing. It took about six days for the condensation to really get out of the building. So as I said, we had the Velux open, we had all the tilt and turn windows open. And whenever I was here, uh, anytime in the mornings or in the evenings, I had all of the windows wide open. All of the windows upstairs are open as well, because obviously as the moisture rises through the house, it's gonna try and find the pad out. So the Velux are open and the windows are all upstairs are open. There's no access in, uh, you know, for, uh, people can't get into the top windows anyway. I actually have them tied as well, just in case. And then the Velux um, upstairs are open on their, on their little lock units. So, so I suppose that was the biggest thing, but that's kind of subsided now. There isn't really any condensation. It's lovely and warm in the house. The unit is performing very, very well. I guess in a couple of months, I'll probably have a look and see what the energy consumption is. We'll have a look and see what that's like. Obviously we haven't gone for solar panels, but there is the option of that down the line. Uh, we need to prioritize some other things on the project, but it's going along really, really well. So we'll finish off the electrical. We'll start getting our flooring down, finish off our decorating, all of our skirtings in. The kitchen will be going in. There'll be a video coming up of our kitchen and our utility going in as well. And then all the other bits and bobs, TVs going on walls, setting up our artwork, lighting, putting up their, our artwork if, if we can find some uh, for now. But uh, yeah, look, I hope you've enjoyed the, uh, uh, the update today if you do have any questions please let me know we really really appreciate everyone commenting and watching our videos and subscribing of course so please do go on to our channel have a look at our previous videos please like and subscribe as much as you can and pop on the little bell notification for when we put up a, a new video i'll try and keep them coming as as quickly as i can obviously days go by where i'm just to the pump trying to get things done but yeah thanks again if you do have any questions let me know and see you again next time